Well, it must, you must know, because you've helped make it happen, uh, how special this uh, road trip's going to be to Montana and for, for Jarrett. And if you just talk about, you know, he was kind of a messenger for you when he came here, because here was a guy in the room who had gotten used to your regimen a little bit already and could set a tone for others to watch. Um, he's had a real conspicuous role in your eyes. Absolutely, you know, and, and uh, just the decision to stick around a sixth year kind of surprised us. Uh, you know, this last two years, it's been no secret that Jared's been pretty banged up and beat up and had a lot of surgeries. But just the competitor in him was the reason that I'm sure he chose to come back a sixth year. He just didn't want to leave on that note. And I think the thing that Jarrett brought to us at Iowa State was instant credibility in terms of how hard you have to wrestle to be successful. Uh, obviously, Jarrett's got a very, very unorthodox style, and that's probably saying it lightly, but he brings such a high caliber, high pace, uh, not afraid to get tired, stuff we talk to our guys out about, about all the time, and that's a lot easier said than done, um, but he's been able to do that consistently in his career. That's the one thing that I'll always remember about Jarrett was just how hard he competes. From the moment you found out that you weren't going to go to Arizona State to the moment you got the final okay that we're going to have this meet against Cal Bakersfield. How long was that? Probably took us 48 hours to put it together with contracts and helping them uh, financially get out here and stuff like that. Um, you know, we kind of got lucky. We talked to a ton of schools. Um, we were really close to getting, possibly getting a dual meet with Michigan and some people like that. But everybody was scrambling on that day that uh, a lot of people kind of got shut down with uh, some COVID reports. So it was great that Cal Bakersfield actually was getting ready to come this way. They're going to actually stay in Ames this week, and then on Friday they're going to go to Central Michigan. Uh, the Cal Bakersfield coach is a graduate of, uh, of Central Michigan, and so they've got a quad there or something. So we just kind of got lucky just to get anybody. So what are the challenges that uh, the Roadrunners bring? Um, you know, they're just a, a Division One caliber team with a lot of uh, – uh, California kids on their squad and obviously Cal Bakersfield if everybody knows wrestling has been a division one program for many years um, and uh, they've had some great tradition and some great wrestlers and uh, you know it's kids we don't get to see very often because it's pretty much all California kids in their roster and I know they've got a really good 133 and I know they're competitive at a couple weights so right now we just need to wrestle and then you know get up early Thursday morning catch a plane to Denver, drive to Laramie, and then compete fr uh, Friday night in a tough place to wrestle at Laramie, Wyoming. It's what we need right now. We need something hard, and it's going to be a hard 72 hours for our guys. Uh, going back to going to Montana on Sunday, what does it mean to you to add these types of matches to your schedule, you know, at unique places and things, you know, like Jared's situation where it's going to be in his high school gym? Well, I kind of made a deal with his dad when he uh, made his transfer from Virginia Tech to Iowa State, and all his dad asked was, was that we come out and wrestle in Montana one time. And so, uh, Terry, here we are, and I know he's excited about it. I know the Montana people are excited about it. We had a setup last year with actually Oregon State and Duke, um, and it fell through uh, because of COVID. So we weren't able to get anybody out there. It was Division One, but we thought, you know, hey, let's help Montana out. And... Um, They've got two good uh, Division II NAI programs close, so that's the reason we're wrestling those schools. Um, has it been difficult so far this year with dealing with COVID and navigating teams that might have to cancel, maybe even inside your program and looking towards March? Well, I can speak, I think, on behalf of everybody that's in college athletics and that it's been a very much a challenge, uh, you know, getting shut down. We've been knock on wood without, you know, any positives for almost a week now. Um, and we didn't have very many um, at all, but other people haven't been so fortunate. So, you know, right when you think you're getting ready to wrestle, you get pulled back. So I give these kids a lot of credit. They've had, a, a, you know, she's almost two years now, but 22 plus months of enduring with stopping and starting and stopping and starting. And so I, I commend our medical people here. I commend our administration for keeping us in the best place we can be considering all we got to deal with. Other than, you know, having the expectation of hoping your guys win, what are you really hoping to see out of them this week with four different duels they're competing in? Well, I like to see how you deal with hard things. And, um, you know, getting done Wednesday night, um, probably having to throw on your sweats after your match, get a little bit of weight off, 
get up and leave uh, your training facility at 6.30 the next morning, fly to Denver, get in the van and ride for a couple hours in a van, get out of the van, go do a workout, uh, get up the next day and get ready to wrestle a team that's gonna be really hungry to beat us. Um, in, in, in enemy territory, I know they have a great atmosphere and Coach Brantz has done a great job. And you know, I, don't, I just looked at the rankings today and I don't even think they're ranked in the top 25, probably because they haven't had any dual meets except for maybe Oklahoma State. And that's really hard to measure somebody by that, but it's gonna be a really, really tough test. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for to see how our guys handle hard things right now. And then how did you feel about your guys' uh, performance this weekend at the Open? Yeah, we took some guys out there, you know, and um, you know, I think we had some good performances. We, we could have been nice to win one of those weights, but we got second a couple places, third. So it's getting us kind of closer to figuring out this lineup. And, you know, obviously this month we'll do that. And with uh, Ian dropping down to 141, what are you hoping for Redding's future? Um, right now, Redding got actually got banged up a little bit out there. So we're nursing some ribs right now. So we're kind of, you know, really, he's probably going to have to sit for a little bit here. We don't know how long. So we're just going to see how long he heals up. You know, obviously, Zach Redding's a pretty talented guy. So at, at some point, um, you know, we have to make a decision where where he's going to end up and if when he's going to get in to get a, a chance for maybe a tryout. Um, but we got to figure out, we got to get him healthy first. And so we've got uh, some MRIs and x-rays that we're just getting back now. We'll see where he's at.